Let's there see what happens. Is. There he is, man. Coffee. He's got his coffee ready. He's good to go. Hello, Matt. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Hey, I'm going to give you the introduction you deserve. Hold on a second. And you're waking up to the vibe. We got him out of bed at 7 o'clock, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He's ready to rock and roll in the house. He shared the bill with uh, musicians and bands such as the Lumineers, the Black Crows. He shared the stage with uh, Brett Young. He has uh, one of his songs, from what I understand, we're going to talk about this, was accepted out of 19,000 songs in the uh, International Songwriting Contest. And I'm going to quote Matt on this. He likes to welcome you to the experience. I like that. It brought me back to my Jimi Hendrix days when I when I hear that. <laughs> And uh, what I what I really liked, and we're going to talk about this today, is when I read how he was inspired to write music after working with children with autism. And we're going to get yes. into that because uh, I just booked a group. We'll talk more about this, but for next week. So, hey, good morning, Matt Santry. How are you, man? Good morning. Uh, I'm still waking up. <laughs> you say you got up at 2 a.m.? I did. Yes. I did. Time do you go to bed? <laughs> One. <laughs> One a.m. Yeah. Okay. No, it cracks me up. I was telling Rebecca, I says, you know, every time I book a musician, everybody has the same feedback. They go, yeah, this is cool, but like 7 a.m. And then at the end of the show, they're going, that was great, man. Thanks. I'm like, I got an early start to my day. <laughs> yeah. I'm up before my three-year-old, so this is great. Is that Your so you? Yeah, you, you, you have. Right? How, how many yeah. kids do you have, Matt? Just one. Just one. Three yeah. three years old. Musician? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Get him going. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, so uh, we've got stuff to talk about. We have music to play. First, I want to thank you for getting up at 7 a.m., joining us here on uh, Wake Up to the Vibe. I want to uh, just dive right in and talk about something here because I want you to clarify it for me because I'm a big voice fan, okay? I have not oh, missed okay. an episode since the day the show came out. Yeah. We're, we're, you worked with The Voice. So, yeah, for a commercial. Um, and really, I guess, I don't know, Poetic Justice, whatever you want to call it. Um, I had auditioned a couple times, and then the I think it was the third time around, I got the invite, someone from The Voice the casting company, said, hey, um, we'd love for you to come in and do a private audition. You know, we think you're great for the show. So, uh, you know, come on down. We'll reserve this time for you. You don't have to wait in line. I was like, excellent. This is going to be great. Um, and I was all ready to sing. This is like 2016. And my, and my song was Tennessee Whiskey. So, so I get in there and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to do this. Like, all right, well, what song are you going to sing? I said, Tennessee Whiskey, uh, Chris Stapleton. <laughs> No, don't do that song. Uh oh. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm like, what, 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 no, no, no. We've we've heard that too many times. Do something else. Oh my gosh. I was like, okay, cool. So I just kind of did some other stuff, and it didn't work out. So it was the third time, and I was just kind of I was done with it. But then uh, a year or so later, I got a call from an agent. Hey, uh, you know, can you make a demo uh, for the voice? It's a commercial that's going to air for the voice. I was like, sure. So um, my job was to be Blake Shelton and Adam Levine. I was, so I was the, like the guide vocal for their track. So they would hear my voice coming through the speakers so they would know what to sing. Right. And then on top of that, I sang harmonies. And then I came to find like uh, when, this, when it aired on the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 52, wow. um, they, they kept my vocal tracks in there. I mean, I, I wasn't featured, but I was still a part of the cast and so yeah yeah i got that's cool hey the money hit the bank account that's all that, <laughs> <laughs> that's right yeah but that, listen that's an accomplishment man i mean how yeah. many people get that position you know what i mean yeah so you know, that's, that's, now it's on my resume so it's kind of cool yeah uh -huh. yeah well that that's what got you here to wake up to the vibe no I'm just okay <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was Jason Adamo. It was Jason Adamo. <laughs> Shout out to Jason. Well, so you actually have a background in uh, singing jingles and commercials, right? Well, yeah. I mean, I've done it a bunch. Absolutely. 
What's that back? Was it Febreze? Yeah, I did one for Febreze. Um, recently did something for Apple. So like, you know, it's awesome. like the bits and pieces here and there. So it's, it's that's awesome. It's fun. I, I listen. Well, I think like I think it was uh, Richard Marks, right? Wasn't Richard Marks years ago? You remember him? You ever hear of him? Matt? Absolutely. Yeah, he was. He was a, like I think he did a peanut butter commercial or something before he was Richard <laughs> Marks. <laughs> I think his father owned an ad agency or something, something like that. So uh, I have to ask you: uh, you have an IPA shirt on. Are you an IPA guy? Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, wow, my voice just went up an octave when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens yeah. to me when I drink IPA, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also, you know, it's the state of Pennsylvania, which my home state. So that's right. That's right. Kind of a, well, IPA. And now, now speaking of Pennsylvania, um, you're a Philadelphia guy, right? Yeah. Didn't you do something for the, I, I thought I saw a YouTube video uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles, right? Yeah. Yeah. Not, not, it wasn't like an official thing. It was just something I did that it got picked up by, um, you know, the local ABC affiliate and, uh, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So it was, it was the fight song for the Eagles when they were, uh, they were the underdogs in the Super Bowl, and then they actually won. So right. nice. very yeah. cool time. So what do you like? So do you like sit on the couch and watch TV and go, I could write a song for that. I could write a song for that. Like, <laughs> like you're attacking all these TV things, man. <laughs> I just, ha you know what it is? I had a song that um, was on my last EP that had like a similar vibe. So we, we just took the music and kind of like rearranged it lyrically to fit what was going on with the vibe in Philadelphia with the, uh, the Eagles Super Bowl. So, right. Very cool. Yeah. How long yeah. have you been uh, at this songwriting game? Um, I mean, you know, since I've been picking up the guitar in high school, uh, but I, I think like I really got serious about like lyric content and things like that it was probably after college. Um, and, like the first time I really understood it, I, I was I got into this workshop at um, at BMI in New York. So um, that really opened my eyes to, you know, lyric content. And I wrote and then it, that was two. 2001 and i wrote a song about the statue of liberty which was like one of my first songs but people still request it today so that was a, a cool oh, wow man. yeah that's pretty cool so you 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 um it seems like there's a, a theme going on here and and the one thing that i like uh that you said and i made a joke of it and said it brought me back to Jimi hendrix uh because of the hendrix experience right which i have a great deal of respect for hendrix i'm not comparing you to hendrix but uh i like the fact that you said you welcome people to the experience right am i am i phrasing yeah. that right um yeah yeah so um I think I was quoting like a, a song that I recently wrote, let me be your change of scene. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, I mean, that's what's, that's what music is all about. It's for me, the connection, right? So the experience of, uh, you know, listening and interacting with other people and just being part of something. Right. Right. Now you're, you're obviously, you're a festival guy too, right? I, I, I know that you've uh, that. shared the bill with the luminaires, the black crows, right? Uh, I mean, now what? Right now, the festivals are happening in your living room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's well. This is my live stream setup. So this is what I've been doing every week. Um, and w the way I approach it is, I bring on a guest. So like what we're doing here in Zoom, I do a similar thing where I have another singer songwriter, and we go back and forth for two hours. So this is. I think we're in week nine now with all this, mm -hmm. and. Um, I love it. I'm getting great feedback, um, introducing my audience to new singer songwriters. Uh, I'm making new fans from the guests, uh, fans and something I'm definitely going to continue even when we can live our lives. Like we used to. Yeah. Yeah. How often do you do that? The live stream show? <clears throat> well, this is, I think the ninth week. Um, I I've been doing is it. it. Is it every day or. Oh no, no. It's just, it's once a week that I do the thing with, with the guests. So, um, tomorrow night uh 8 p.m eastern standard you can tune in to my facebook page or my uh youtube channel and you can check it out but yeah we're doing this every week um and it's going to be either friday or saturday night right now so 
Yeah, very cool. I can tell that you do live stream. I love when I when I have somebody on the show who is actually not only familiar with the technology and everything, but your your video quality is great. Your audio quality is great. It's like, yep, cool. legit. So so thank you for that. Sometimes we struggle sometimes, man. Uh, well, Matt, Matt, back in two, 2017, was it, that you started um, making videos going on live, I think on Facebook, to those that – are suffering medical conditions. So you paved the way for this. So I was doing it back then. Uh, yeah, a friend of mine, uh, she was diagnosed with cancer for the second time in her life. It was like, what, again, you know? So um, I was like, what can I do? And um, so I just did a, uh, you know, this is my basement. This is uh, the studio and slash everything room. And um, I just went on my phone and I did a, a broadcast for her. And, um, then other people started requesting that I do it and it wound up being like people would be in the hospital and, you know, have their phone and, and I would dedicate some songs to them. So, so it was a really cool, um, way to get started with streaming, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It really brought tears to my eyes. So that, that, that is pretty awesome uh, because, uh, you know, for a lot of people, this is all brand new, the whole streaming thing and, yeah, and going so. live on Facebook and, uh, what what are you what are you finding like like even with your show are you finding obviously your audience is growing but i just had a conversation with someone yesterday and they educated me on spotify i mean i know spotify is out there but i'm not a spotify user but the, but um i don't know if you know keaton simons you know yeah. keaton right because the, mm -hmm. I, I think you opened up for uh brett young right well brett that was like back in the day when he was just a guy like us in nashville you know so um but I know Keaton plays with him now, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I was on yeah. the phone with Keaton yesterday, and and uh, he was giving me the 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 schooling on how the industry has changed and and how Spotify pays out. It's tough to to be a, a musician today and sell records. Oh yeah, right. Because you're not yeah. selling product any longer, you know. But uh, so how many albums do you have out? Um. Well, I don't know because now. You, you know, you mentioned Spotify. I took my last EP and I just broke it up into singles. And because um, the way the algorithm works, it prefers if you are um, publishing content more often. So that's what I'm going to continue to do. I'm just, I'm going to separate it out. Like if you, if you want a physical hard copy, uh, you know, you can buy it from me directly. Otherwise, the digital formats, it's just going to be a song at a time. And I'm going to try to, so last year, I think it was, uh, you know, I did like four songs. So I'm going to just continue to put out singles. So I, I don't even know how to quantify right. releases anymore. <laughs> yeah, <know? right. laughs> it's, it's, it blows my mind how things have changed. But obviously the objective is to get people to add your song to their playlist. Right. I mean, that's one of the objectives. To, yeah. To, to save to save the song. That's the biggest thing. How many saves per uh, listens that really boosts um your your reach with right. spotify yeah so all right now now let's do this because uh i want to play a song and so okay. we can encourage our viewers to actually save it on their spotify uh list for those of you who just jumped in the room we're talking with matt santry uh singer songwriter uh, and now the first song I'm, I'm going to play is overthinking is this okay. is this the one that okay. was selected for the international yeah. songwriting contest yeah, we made the uh, the semifinals, which was a nice nod. And uh, I haven't actually recorded that song yet. So um, now with everything that's going on, uh, the plan is just to do some acoustic demos and then maybe release them as is. And, and then 2021 uh, do full production versions of the songs. Right. I love the song, man. It, it's a great tune. I was me listening too. to it the me other too. day. And what can you give me set the stage for it? Tell me what the song is about. Uh, well, the title is overthinking, but you know, the tag is overthinking, overthinking about you. And I think that, uh, you know, it's a relationship song. Um, and the way we wrote it, it can be interpreted any type of relation. I think people interpret it as a romantic relationship. Um, that's not necessarily what I had in mind. Uh, but you could definitely uh, hear it and interpret it how you want, but it's just, you're, you're just done thinking about somebody else. Like you just want to get them out of your head. 
<laughs> Easier said than done, right? <laughs> All right, so hang tight. We'll be back. I'm going. I'm playing the song here. Uh, this is called "Overthinking" by Matt Santry, and uh, you're waking up to the vibe here, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy the song here. Some really good stuff for you. The camera. This one's called "Overthinking." Taking back my life Every time I hear your name Feels like a hit real wide I'm second guessing Walking out the door But the past is past And I don't live there no more Inside my head again Was it something worth mending? Overthinking, overthinking, overthinking Everything I do Ooh. Keep on drinking, keep on drinking Till the cheapest whiskey goes down up to the vibe that's matt santry kicking it this morning feeling good oh my gosh i just love this stuff every single morning it's beautiful so let me ask you a question matt um you're with me right yeah okay so when you when you go where, where was that performance um so a venue uh in philadelphia Manny Yunk, to be exact, uh, the locks it's called. And was that the actual contest or that's just the song? Yeah, that was just the uh, first time I think I performed it live. Oh, so. wow. Was that? Are you yeah. playing a Lyra V? What, what, kind um, of, what kind of guitar is that? In that video, that's a that's a Gibson J45. Uh, oh, OK. I do, I do have a Lyra V. And I, and I love it. I've had I've had it for 20 years. I yeah, I've, I've only played one once and uh, it's an amazing guitar, man. It's like yeah. uh, I'm surprised they're not more mainstream, you know? Yeah. So so I want to I want to kind of go to uh, your career of working with children with autism. Mm. OK, uh, are you still in that in that uh, industry? 
Well, yes and no. Uh, I, I'm not employed that way, but actually our, our son is on the spectrum, which okay. is you know, crazy, uh, you know, twist of fate, but yes. So, it, and, yes and, and, no. it, <laughs> and, it, and it gives you some challenges, I'm sure, yeah. you know, um, yeah. interesting because, uh, years ago, Rebecca and I had a radio show in upstate New York and we featured this band called flame. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're pretty popular in the, in the world of, of autism. Um, I just booked them yesterday. They're, they're on the show next week. Oh, cool. And yeah, and it's the most amazing thing because uh, Michelle King is the singer and it's, it's difficult to communicate with Michelle. And the minute she starts playing and singing, it's, it's, it's just, yeah. it's amazing. It's amazing. And it's, uh, uh, did you find that when, when you were working with, with children with, with, with autism? Uh, yeah. One of the clients I had, um, I, he was, he was seven years old and he, he was mostly nonverbal, but, uh, we would work on music, you know, cause he loved it. And I, I, part of our routine, I would sing to him and play. And then he was able to sing full songs, even though he couldn't have a conversation, you know? Uh, so that was, that was really powerful. That was amazing. It is amazing. It just, it, yeah. it floors me, you know, it, it's, it's just, uh, and I, I'm going to encourage you to, to watch Michelle next week and beautiful yeah, voice. Definitely. And, uh, uh, I'm not sure if she writes any originals cause I know she does a lot of, a lot of covers as well. I caught you singing a uh, Van Morrison tune. In, oh, yeah. <laughs> which was funny into the mystic it happens to be one of my favorites oh, right cool. do, you, do you do a lot of covers as well yeah, yeah absolutely um a lot of you know special event private event type stuff um for sure yeah are you a big van morrison fan yeah i mean you know who isn't of course. yeah <laughs> <laughs> so where, where do you go from here what are you working on today i mean not as in this day but musically what what are we working on um, well, like I mentioned, I'm, I'm going to, I'm toying with the idea of, um, releasing acoustic demos before full production stuff. And usually it's the other way around. Like, you, you know, an artist will release a full produced album or whatever it is. And then, you know, as like bonus content after the fact here, here's a demo or here's a acoustic version. Um, I'm thinking about doing it in reverse order just because, you know, recording studios aren't open right now. Um, also this is a tough time financially. Um, and what I can do on my own is I can, I can make acoustic demos at least of all the new material I have. Um, so it's just a matter of like, am I going to put that stuff on Spotify or I don't know how I'm going to distribute it. Um, yeah. So that's, that's what I'm working on. I, I actually think, uh, we're and Keaton and I were talking about this yesterday. I think we're going to see a big shift in, in the music industry because of this Absolutely. pandemic, right? I, Absolutely. I, you know, you, you, you've got, you know, you got people like uh, Keith Urban sitting in front of his phone with his with his guitar, you know, and, uh -huh. and it's uh, I think it's as a matter of fact, you know, we you talk about the voice and American Idol, these produ produced song contest shows. Yeah, I, I think they would have been better off if they let, you know, when they when the contestants went home yeah. to perform at home. They should have just kept it raw sitting on the couch with their guitar. I think when they added in all the special effects and everything, it just yeah. kind of like, oh, you're killing me now. That's just an opinion. <laughs> well, I, I know. And I, I think that's great because, um, you know, bringing it back to a more raw form of art, I think, I think that's a good thing. Um, and I think it's just going to be more acceptable to, to view things that way. And, and for me, like I said, I, I want to continue the streaming uh, even when we can go back to doing live concerts uh, because there's still a segment of the population that either can't go out or, or, or doesn't really want to, or, you know, or they have young kids or whatever it is that just, you know, Hey, I, I would love to just sit on the couch and watch you from my living room. Yeah. 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 It's pretty cool. I, I think, uh, you know, when you look at, when you look back the, the days of, you know, James Taylor and Crosby, Stills and Nash and Arlo Guthrie and, and Paul Simon, Simon Garfunkel, right? It was all raw. This is the, that was yeah. their produced stuff was sure. You know, yeah. the, the quality of what you're putting out right now, that video we just played, 
that quality yeah. is is much better than what they were doing in the early 70s you know so so i say bring it back um yeah. living in the moment the song living in the moment is that the 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 title of the ep uh in the moment is the ep yeah it's the same same song that song is is part of that ep it's on there i know it's again a confusing because the ep actually was only like a physical copy um the streaming i broke it into singles so it's you won't actually find that ep online it's just singles right <laughs> what did what did i read it, it when it when you released it it came out on billboards heart seekers heat Char seekers so yeah so it's uh it, it charted in the mid-atlantic region uh the heat seekers chart so uh, <laughs> i was just i had done enough um pre-sales of the physical copies that you know we we made a little dent we made a little little splash there so it was it was cool that that's funny you want to know why because when i when i read um your <laughs> that's funny i had my glasses on too i read it wrong because i had read that that your music i don't know if it was something you quoted or somebody said about your music was was heart driven pop right yeah yeah that mm -hmm. term was used so then when i read the billboard chart i thought it was heart seekers <laughs> and i'm like oh my god this guy's a heartthrob man he's like he his, his album came out and he's on the heart seekers chart already <laughs> yeah that's it's a new genre well it's it, the, the the first video i watched of you i thought to myself this guy you could have hosted the voice I, i'm not kidding have you ever been told that no uh i've just been rejected enough to, to know that uh, <laughs> it was not meant to be they're like listen you can't play that chris stapleson song but can you host the show tonight <laughs> so yeah, what is put, put some whiskey in my coffee mug like, like blake <laughs> or whatever he does <laughs> i like blake man he's like one of my favorite i actually like the whole cast this year that i think they're doing a good job um give me a, a little background on this living in the moment i mean uh, what's the what's the meaning behind this song um it's just a reminder uh from a uh relationship standpoint from you know a married couple like um going through you know the the times when you were young and just focused on having fun to to now uh everything that's changed and um you know what can we do about it what, what how how can we how can we bring back um that passion or that excitement um so let's you know let's just take this moment let's let's remember to live in this moment yeah, that's that's a, a good setup. I actually like the concept of that because I think that's think about all the all the people who get married and they go through like especially this quarantine. Like, man, you really got to be in love. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I married you and I love you. I didn't really think I was going to get stuck in the house with you for the next two months. <laughs> oh, Beck, I'm sorry. You have to hit it on your phone. This is something. Okay. I've been is, trying to ask Matt a question. And then uh, I look up, I'm like, I'm on mute. I'm, I was wondering why you wouldn't let me jump I, in. No, I don't know why that's the, the, something strange has been going on with my Zoom account. I don't know. I'm like, I'm like Joe, why are you talking over me? <laughs> and I'm just looking at my camera, which is. <laughs> my camera, so I, I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to step back and I'm going to let Rebecca to talk to you a little question. while to okay. catch up. Just what? No, just one question. Okay. I wanted to know, since you became a father, has it changed you at all musically? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. In your um, writing? Or? Yeah, I mean, um, it's funny. I was I did an interview yesterday, and the topic came up about, like, themes. And I'm not really, like, a big love song writer. Right, I mean, right, I have right. a, a couple. Uh, but most of my themes are about, like, just what I'm going through in my life. So yeah, when Charlie was born, I was definitely like way more into the love right, right. theme and just kind of writing songs about, you know, that's cool. What was happening. So um, awesome. I like that oh, name, yeah. Charlie. Me too. No, I like that. Me it's too. a cool name. I don't know why I always like the name Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> well, he's, he's in a class of, of eight and three of the kids are named Charlie. So no, was, sir. No, <laughs> sir. Like, is Charlie the new, you know, John these days? I don't know. <laughs> It is. We have girls named Charlie in our sure. school. Yeah. Are, are you in uh, Nashville now or are you in Philadelphia? Uh, Philly. You're in Philly. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> That's pretty funny. Three out of eight people in the name of Charlie. And then, the, right, the other five people are, are female. <laughs> All right, we're going to play a song. This is called Living in the Moment. So, so hang tough here, man, and uh, switching gears. Matt Santry, you're waking up to the vibe. This is Living in the Moment. Enjoy this, folks. The days are barely making the rent last minute road trips. We always put our happiness first. Like Bonnie and Clyde Living so reckless But loving every day We're alive But then something changed We slowly played it safe I guess we started Growing up Now I'm worried about us, baby We don't take chances anymore Let's do something crazy Before the morning comes And take us back to living in the moment Before the moment's gone Hoping for a little us time Just before the kids wake Instead we drink our coffee in silence Counting every penny we can save And looking towards the future While missing what's in front of our face When did it change? It came on with age And I guess we wanted something more But now I'm worried about us later Take chances anymore. The fire started fading when we got too comfortable. So let's do something crazy. Get up to the vibe and that's matt santry living in the moment all right so now there you go i'm not muted <laughs> we, have, we, have, we have a friend on our facebook that wants to know if you're playing in nashville it's from mark leela from birmingham alabama um i mean well, not right now, obviously. <laughs> when things are safe, yeah. I mean, so 
That's actually the last live gig I did was in Nashville. Uh, really? In March. Um, and then I was down, uh, I go down, you know, whenever I can, uh, right before Thanksgiving, the week before Thanksgiving, I got to do this fun gig, um, at, um, marathon music works. I think it's called, um, the headliner, uh, that night, um, old dominion. And I was just outside entertaining the crowd. I was, I was hired by Pandora, um, cause cool. they were putting on the show. So I was, I was out there entertaining the crowd, just kind of like walking around with my guitar, like a busker. <laughs> <Is that right? laughs> and, uh, it was, it was, it was intimidating, but it was fun. And the cool it thing like fun. about, about Nashville is like, I had a number of times of people in the crowd were like, yeah, yeah, we heard you do that. Whatever song can you got to have your own music. Can we hear your stuff? I was like, yes, you may like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, living so in the was, moment, man. It was cool. See, I, yeah. like that. Yeah. I, I like the, uh, the verse living in the moment before the moment's gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't that the, that's the funny thing about life, right? right, right, right. Nine out of 10 times people live in the past. Right. You're so yes. focused on what happened yesterday or the and, future, right? Yeah. Or, or the future. Right. Yeah. But, but exactly. the, po the power of now, man, is, is, yeah. uh, it's, it's legit. So how does one, uh, get your music? I, all the, uh, regular sources, iTunes, Spotify, Amazon. Yeah. Everywhere. So, um, like I said, you know, some of those songs aren't recorded yet. Um, the best way right now, uh, if you guys, are interested it's go.mattsantry.com so um if you if you go to that page you can follow me and i'm going to send you updates about all the new stuff that i'm recording um but for the existing stuff i think spotify apple music youtube you know those are the best places to go awesome very good man hey i want to thank you for joining us and sharing your music with us it's, it's a good friday friday morning feels good man uh, and thanks for having me you, you know? do you mind if i play your stuff throughout like the weeks ahead like throughout the i'll add you to my list and and That'd play great your, yeah you're cool do. awesome you're cool that I'm, i don't send any royalty checks or anything though oh, then never mind. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh so thank you very much we got matt santry in the house today and uh make sure you check out his music matt you're doing great things are you live tonight tomorrow, tomorrow. night tomorrow, tomorrow night yeah. Yeah, 8 Eastern <laughs> Standard uh, from my Facebook and my YouTube channel. And then I'll see you there. All right, awesome. Do you Can you see how Rebecca keeps me in line? I didn't mute her on purpose, honestly. <laughs> oh, I feel so stupid. I'm like trying to talk. I'm like, why are they ignoring I'm getting me? harassed. I'm getting beat up by this now in the chat room. <laughs> I, I know, I saw hey matt we're gonna let you uh get your day started here and uh, rebecca and i are gonna close up the show thank you so much for waking up to the vibe we'll be in touch again brother i'm sure all right thanks awesome, Joe. thanks, matt. thanks you, guys you got it all right take care ciao good stuff there rebecca you're you're too funny yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> that's matt santry I, I love meeting oh all gosh. of these musicians and listening to He's all this awesome. all it's good stuff right and I'm going to ask oh, yeah. everybody that's in the room. Uh, see, like my brother just uh, said, thank you, Matt. Yes. I love that. You know, for those of you that are listening, please give a shout out to the musicians and and the people that we uh, interview follow because them. they go back. Yeah, follow them on on Facebook, mm -hmm. right? So next week, man, we have stuff going on. So. Uh, the interview with Anthony Vertucci when the system shut down, but the interview continued. Uh, yes. We're, we're going to be airing that on Monday. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be a, a pretty cool day. And, and I had the day open. So we're doing that on, on Monday. Uh, on Tuesday, I have a band called, well, it's a duo called Bright Side Blue. And they're outstanding. Mm -hmm. On yes, Wednesday, yeah. Pat McGee, when trying to nail him down for the last three weeks, we got him on, on uh, the calendar for Wednesday. And then on Thursday, uh, Matt O'Ray is on. That's the, the guy I sent you last night. He played guitar yes. for Bon Jovi, and uh, yes. he cut a single with Bruce Springsteen, right? Yes. It's, it's, yes. it's getting legit around here. I'm telling you, raising the bar. <laughs> ever since you got on the show ever since you came back into my life <laughs> i've never been out of your life <laughs> things have not been the same oh i got an idea too listen 
So next right. Friday, once a month, we decided, as we were talking yesterday, once a month, we're going to do quarantine with the Vibe Tribe. And rather yes. than do it in, uh, every week, because that never worked out. And I tried, but no. it doesn't work out. So we're going to do it once a month. We could pull that off. I yes. have such a fun. It came up with it yesterday. I'm not going to spill the beans here on the air. But I am telling you, we'll talk after the show. You're going to love quarantine with the vibe tribe next friday so for those of you that are listening all of you in the room just just volunteer to be on quarantine with the vibe tribe all you have to do is log into zoom it's that easy you click on a link